I love stamps, stencils, and dies that are designed to work together. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I've got some gorgeous products from Pink Fresh Studio and I'm going to create a card that I love. It's clean, it's simple. The process, there's a few steps, but in the end, mwah. to see that card project, stick around. It's coming up next. It's okay to love your cards, right? Yeah. Here's a look at the products I'll be using today. I've got a beautiful collection of ink from Pink Fresh Studio and I've got this really lovely set and this is called Lovely Blooms and it's going to stamp all of this bloomery, I don't know if that's the word, at one time and then you can die cut it all out as well. But the other cool part is there is a layering stencil to help color this in. So when I get a package and it has colors suggested for me, you know what I do? I basically pull colors that are similar and I am going to make some pink and orange blooms today. So let's get set up first with our stamping. I'm going to use my larger Misty because I think I'm going to do my stenciling in, in here today. I'm not 100% sure. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, but I am going to take the bloom out and I'm going to place this on my cardstock right about there. Placing you here, that's plenty of room for the die. And pick that up and put this back in. I've got a piece of Concord and Ninth white cardstock today. And I'm just going to prime the stamp a little by running my fingers over it to remove the coating from manufacturing. Always remember to do this before you stamp or just stamp a few times and clean it off because these stamps will stamp better and better over time. But I always use new stamps in a lot of my videos, which is why I do this. I got my magnet here pressed into the corner. I'm going to use Memento Tuxedo Black, which will be just fine for doing my ink blending over the top with the stencils. Now this has a very delicate outline, which I kind of love. I love when they are well, I don't know what the weight is on this, but it looks to be about a 0.3 line width. That's just the designer and me trying to trying to guess. But we're gonna we're gonna stamp this a couple times to get a really nice impression, and then I'm going to leave it in here so that if I want to come back and stamp it again, I can. So we're just transferring here, and I do have my cute little pink fresh pressure tool. All right, lift that up. That looks really good. I'm gonna stamp it again until I get the impression that I'm looking for. In the corner and transfer. I think I'm gonna hit it one more time. Again, my paper has not moved. I'll just ink this up. I do have a re-inker for my Memento pad and I probably should give it a go because it's pretty dried out, right? And press. Now, again, I'm going to leave this here so that when I'm done, I can go ahead and stamp over if I need to, to really bring out the black after I've blended. Let me get this stamp cleaned off, leave it here and get set up for ink blending. I'm actually gonna do my ink blending on this little sticky mat from my Altenew stamp wheel. Um, it's pretty cool and so I think, I think that's what I'm gonna do. Now, I'm gonna get these lined up to the best of my ability here. I can't use the crop marks because I already stamped it and I didn't stamp it in the right uh, direction, but it's not, it's not too hard to figure out how they line up because once you can see them through all the way, just do that, <laughs> like that. And then this is gonna hold everything in place for the blending. So we've got that lined up. That looks pretty good. Let me get my brushes. I'm gonna put Fresh Pear Down as my first color. I'm just gonna use a paper towel to clean from whatever color I was using last time. And here, we're just gonna bring this color in. And I think I've got this lined up pretty well. All right, let's get some ink on here and bring it in. Just 
just blend on through the stencil. And this mat really does hold this beautifully. I still put my hand down just to make sure I'm getting as, you know, that it's not going to slip on the paper itself, but you can see how it sticks. I think this is such a cool use for this little mat. Okay. So our first layer down, easy peasy, breezy. Okay, like that. And I guess I'll just be putting them all down at an angle. So let's move on to the next stencil. Just pick this up, just like that and set that aside. Now I'm going to bring in this level of greenery detail at the angle, but I think this will be just fine. Get up there, drop down. I'm going to switch to Grassy Knoll and I'm not gonna clean my brush this time because we're just going with a darker color. Okay, I'm bringing in some depth. like that. All right, and lift this up. It's so hard to get up once it's stuck. And now I have a little more depth in this image. Stick. And this is going to be my lighter pink, so I'm going to use Ballet Slipper. And let's blend. So pretty, this gorgeous color. All right, lift. Oh, love how it comes together. That's the thing about layering stencils. They come together and you have the magic happening and you don't have to actually color with a pen and that is my favorite thing. All right, here we're gonna go with our darker pink. I just wanna make sure that I'm getting all of this lined up, okay? And now I'll come in with my darker pink, which is the Sparkling Rose. And no need to clean off the brush because we're just coming in with another pink. Okay. Mm, beautiful, such a pretty color. All right. Gorgeous. Here we go. And we'll get our first layer, which is going to be apricot. And again, this is holding it down nicely. Bring that in. And if you want to do any shading on the flower itself where you go a little darker at one point, you can do that. Lovely. Mm. Okay, pick that up. I mean, it just comes together. I tell you what, layering stencils, they make everyone look like they know what they're doing, and that's probably my favorite thing about them. Okay, I'm going to bring in my Clementine, a darker orange here, and let me clean off my smaller brush. We'll just put a little bit of this darker color. Actually, well, we'll just bring it in here like this. I don't want to come in too heavy, but heavy enough. Get that detail on the flower. In here. Well, I guess I could, well, let's see. Get your orange there what it would look like if I did just put orange in that layer. Could be different. You know what? I could, but I'm not going to. Hold on here. I'm going to grab my little pink brush. I'm just going to bring in a little bit more of the raspberry. No, the sparkling rose. Let's see. Yeah. I'm going to bring in just a little sparkling rose here because I like my flowers to be more tone on tone efficient. 
there we go. I didn't look at the illustration. Maybe that's how it's supposed to look, but I think this is going to look wonderful. And now we're going to lift it up and look at how pretty that is. Oh, all right. Let me go wash off my stencils and we are going to restamp this one time just to bring all that black back in. Now I'm going to bring this back in. I mean, it doesn't, it's not that it necessarily needs the extra ink, but you know what? It's in the same place. Now I can ink this up, right? Bring it back down. Nothing's moved. This doesn't warp, so we're gonna do it. And I actually grabbed another memento pad that I think is ink. Oh yeah, I can already tell it's ink here. All right, so again, that is if you blend real heavy over any of your things, you can always come back over if you leave your stamp in place, right? Oh, and it just kind of makes it pop out a little bit more. And I love that because there are details on here, right? That we've ink blended over. And now we're just bringing them back. I'm very proud of myself for remembering to do this because I never do. All right. That is lovely. And I am going to, let's see, do I want to die cut next or do I want to do my greeting? Let me think about that. I'm going to grab my anti-static powder tool, just powder up my cardstock. Just removes any static or oil so that when I use my embossing powder and clear embossing ink, that the embossing powder only sticks to where I want it to be. Okay. Get this inked up really well. And I'm going to be very delicate when I press this down. There's my tool. Just a just a light pressure. Let it transfer like that. Okay, and that actually did shift because it's a sticky stamp. So let's see if I manage to get it in the same place. And if I don't, I can always redo it. It's only paper. It's only paper. All right, now let me get my paper catch. All right, I have my little clothes pin, which just keeps my fingers away from the uh, the heat source and protects the mani. That's always important. I'm gonna use ultra fine antique gold powder from Simon Says Stamp. This is a powder that I really love because of its warmth. It's just got a beautiful undertone, deep gold. And you know what? I think I did accidentally do that twice. Yeah, I did a terrible job. Let me restamp this. Take two, let's see. Oh, that already, does that look better? I think it does. I think it just shifted. Let's see. Well, we'll see. Let's get the extra powder. There we go. I just messed it up the first time. All right, this is gonna be lovely. Okay. And that is a lovely, warm, shiny gold greeting. All right, I'll get my dies. I have got my Gemini plates here. I'm gonna show you something that's kind of fun. I actually have the new Gemini 2. Now, I have the larger plates, but I find them to be too large for my space. So I'm using them with my old plates for now until I get the new set of six by nines, which I don't have the full set. So. Here's what it looks like, and I'm giving it a test, but the thing that is so cool about it, number one, it will take these plates. Listen to this, listen. It's so quiet and, watch this. So instead of shooting out the back like they used to, it just stops and I think that's really cool. Now I have been using it with these plates. Let me show you here, hold on. Oh, by the way, the turntable is something that you can add to this machine. So you know I've always had my die cut machine on a turntable, right? So again, I'm trying it out. I'm giving it a good workout. I love how quiet it is. And that I can use it with these plates that I've been using for a long time. So let's. Oh, it really cuts it in too. Let's see. Let's get all these guys out and see what happened. Oh, there's a good cut. Okay. Let's pop you out. 
that. Actually, I guess I could untape it. Wow, that is just really cut in there beautifully. Come on, out you go, out of the die. That, that, okay. And then we have, there we go, that little friend there. And then of course, you can pop out the insides where they are. Woo! So I have that, which looks great. And I have my Celebrate the Little Winds Greeting. Oh, that's all so cute. Now I just have to design a card. I'm going to bring in a piece of cardstock. I actually got some ink on this, but that's okay. I'll make, wait, I'll make that the inside. There we go. Uh, this is 11 inches by four and a quarter, and I'm going to score this right at five and a half, like that. And part of me thinks I'm not going to do a panel, but never say never. I haven't decided yet because I can change my mind. But I do want to have some kind of splatter on here or spatter, spatter, splatter, whatever you want to call it. Let's zoom in. And some dimension too. I mean, it's just the thing that I love about images like this. I mean, honestly, this alone that would be a beautiful card. Oh my gosh, that's so cute just on its own. Oh. And then you could put this on the inside, but I'm trying to create an arrangement here. So let me, I mean, I just, oh, I love these. Okay, either or, right? You could do either or, but I think what I will try to do is create some kind of dimension before I figure out my splatter. So let me get some foam squares on the back of at least this one and this. I'm loving just the two blooms and it would give me another bloom for another flower. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring in the old splat box, but here's what I can't decide. And that is, let's move this over here for now so I don't lose it. What color is splat spat? on. I've got my fan brush and black would be cute, right? That would be kind of different. But what if I just did the darker pink because there's more orange than pink. So it would kind of counterbalance. Let me get some of that ink and we'll wet it down. Let's take, I've got my fan brush. I've got some water. I'm going to take a little bit of the sparkling rose and see what that looks like. And then I might layer in a little of the ballet slipper, but I don't think that's really gonna show up as much. So we'll just go wet you down, wet the brush down, okay? Pick it up. And spat some on here just for, it's not really, I gotta get more water on here, I think. Oh, there we go, right in the center. It's so subtle. <laughs> But it definitely needs to be the sparkling rose. So I'm going to put a little more down like that. Okay. All right. There we go. There we go. That's showing up. Oh, that's pretty. And that's it. We're just going to put a little at a diagonal. I'll clean this up and I'll give you a closer look so you can actually see it. See how it has that little spatter pattern? All right. Moving on. This is the arrangement I want to have. I want this greeting to be centered. So let's start with that and then I can arrange the rest of it. Now, actually, you know what? I need to get another uh, foam square here. You can always do a little, little foam square surgery, right? Cut a little tiny piece that you need, pick it up with a pick and lay it right where you want that to support. Right? That way you're gonna get the support you need just in case it gets smashed in the mail. And uh, you can cut these little guys to any size you like. Now these foam squares are actually the uh, thicker depth from Simon Says Stamp. You could use thinner as well, but I think sometimes on a really simple card like this, I like the shadows that they cast. And that's why I like to use a little bit thicker of a square. Now, what I'm going to do though I'm gonna take my liquid glue, my connect glue, and put a dab on each one. And if you wonder why I do this, it's just so that they have a second to slide around until I know exactly where I want them to go because foam squares, they stick so hard and fast. Now here, I'm just looking at the base. Oh, I'm gonna let go like that. That looks about the same from side to side. And then I'm gonna bring in my T-square push it up against here and I'm 
just going to push that up a little like that. Okay. Then I know the base is straight and I can press this down and commit where the greeting is. Okay. Like that. Then we will take all the backers off of these foam squares and again, just place them strategically to support the floral. And again, liquid glue, a little bit here, just, just a little, right? Doesn't need to be a ton, just enough for that extra float time. I'm gonna slide this out because now what I wanna do is make sure that this little friend goes right over the greeting kind of gets in like that. I think that's what I want. So cute. Okay. So that's there. And now for this piece, oh, <laughs> I'm just going to take liquid glue on the back of this. A few little dots here and there, just kind of swirl it around and slide this in. So this will be right up against the card base. Oh, actually I grabbed it with the wrong side. Let's go like that. And I just sort of sort of slide it in till we find a find an opening in the foam squares. I know it's there. Oh, come on now. I think I have to cut a little. Yep. I didn't quite and don't don't forget you can always cut parts of your flowers as needed. And then just get that right in. Well, I think I need to cut a little more. I thought I had more room. It's fine, because here's what we're doing. There we go. That's what I want. All right. Like that. And press that down. Oh, so cute. That is so cute. All right, let me finish this off with some shine. I'm going to finish this off with some of the Pink Fresh Metallic Pearls in the gold. And let's just glue them down. A nice little arrangement here. All right, let's see if I can pick that straight up. Yep. And Boop. sorry that my hand's getting in the way, but with these heavier embellishments, boop, it helps to go straight down on them to pick them up. Oop, that moved. Let's go. Come on. You can do it with tweezers too. I actually think I got way too much glue on that. Let me see if I can scrape. Well, you know what? It doesn't matter. Well, it does matter. It matters. <laughs> it matters. It matters, sir. Um, what do I have to scrape with though? I have this little guy. It's going to dry clear, but sometimes I just don't like all that excess. There we go. That's better. Okay. Keep going, calf. Little dabble do ya. Pick you up and boop. And then the little tiny right in there like that Boop. and that's my finished card project so I think the little spatter adds just a little right but look at how fun that is now if I wanted to I could pop this on the inside but I actually well I mean it would it wouldn't wouldn't be horrible in there would it oh actually I mean, you know what though? I think I'm just gonna set it aside for another project. That's what I love about the multi stamp and cut out at the same time image. It gives you the option to have extras done. And now I have something really cute. Actually, that would be really cute to put on a tag for a corresponding gift or other little item if you were sending this to someone with a present. I love how this turned out. Thanks for watching today. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber, please become one today and be sure to hit that bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you back here with another card project soon. To see a few more fun card projects featuring products from Paintfresh Studio, check out the two thumbnails I have linked here below and I'll see you in those videos.